Good afternoon, everyone. Every grand solar minimum, there is a VI6 or VI7 eruption across the planet. Take a look at the year without a summer when Mount Tambora erupted to see what we can expect when this next eruption rolls out in the next few years. The 20th century warming, even cooler than the last four centuries. 1692 to 1737, faster rise in temperature than today. Sahel ring, look at northern Africa here. Floods across Ghana, record cold in Kenya with crop losses. Lake Naivasha, also spike in moisture during the little ice age. Every grand solar minimum, there's a large volcanic eruption that blocks out the sun for at least a year to two. Taking a look at what a year without a summer would look like in our modern world, we'll jump back to Mount Tambora. You can see Central Europe would be four degrees Celsius cooler. But you have to realize that that is an eruption down in Indonesia affecting the northern hemisphere temperatures. Now going forward in the atmospheric reanalysis, also a glimpse of temperature drops that would be expected as volcanic ash and sulfur dioxide get into the atmosphere and start blocking out sunlight. It took about nine months for everything to get into play. And this shows you exactly when the temperatures dropped after the initial eruption in April of 1815. A new paper out showing China temperatures were warming during the 1700s. Again, it's all tied to volcanic and solar effects. Nothing with CO2. All the cold periods listed below for you here. When we come down, you can't even find conspicuous 20th century warming. It blends right into the baseline in the 1660s and the 1710 era warmer than today. This analysis came from a 368 year tree ring temperature reconstruction. And as we've heard, it's unprecedented all this warming. You know what? Not really, because if you look back to 1692 to 1737, temperatures actually rose faster than the last 30 years. Also conveniently left out is the 1909 to 1944 rise in temperature, mirroring exactly our 1980 to 2000 temperatures. Speaking of dropping temperatures, this is a look at the Pacific Decadal Oscillation down a full 2C since the beginning of the year. Global temperatures for June also down. Sahel rainfall recovery says it's linked to the intertropical convergence zone pushing further north, which drives and subtracts the moisture from the northern African areas. Looks like it's going to repeat a cycle. They're going to get wetter again. You can see why the Chinese are investing so much money down there in what is now desert areas. It's going to start raining and they can grow food. Accra and Ghana. Record cold across Kenya. Crops lost. More rainfall in the coastal regions. Imagine that. Spinach, tomatoes, onions, and cabbage are the worst hit, so avoid growing those when the weather gets cool. You're going to need something that's a little more hardy for the cooler weather. Staying on crop losses, Ethiopia, tomato, onion prices due to serious flooding. I marked it here on the map for you. Central Ethiopia, just a little bit south of that, you can see Kenya. So that area definitely looks like it's getting wetter. Lo and behold, this is where they grow corn across Africa. That northernmost edge of the corn growing area went a little bit offline due to the drought. But as you can see, it was grown there before. It will be grown again. And the study also says these are from natural temperature fluctuations. And if we look at Lake Naivasha in Kenya, the spike is above 50 meters deep during the Little Ice Age, which means increased precipitation in that area as well. When we look at longer time frames going back 4,000 years, undulations on the left side in blue, the dark blue and the light blue lines are the moisture and the precipitation. As you can see, it's up and down and our climate's continually changing. Last 2,000 years as well, different areas around in Africa changing. A bit closer in. It's mainly the sea surface temperature anomalies around the coastal areas, but that drives localized weather patterns. When we look at continental scale temperature variability over the, and again and again, every chart you look at in the last 2000 years, 
climate is always varying. It's always cooler. It's always warmer. It's always wetter. There's always a drought, but it's a cycle and it repeats and it changes continually. If you hadn't seen this report, the FEMA contractor predicting social unrest by rising food prices, but one of the areas they highlighted in there was Africa. This is exactly what they were talking about to increase the area and also increase the yield by introducing fertilizers and irrigation systems. And these are the areas they were talking about specifically in Western Africa, the maize zone, and also in the northern area, central desert, which is the Sahel right now, but they expect the rain to start falling again and they will be able to cultivate. From the same report, the year 2020 and the world's food growing systems under stress, extreme political unrest and prices skyrocketing. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.